All right, you guys, welcome in. We got One Piece, chapter 11, 23 spoilers. My name is Sai, and today we are here to tackle the hot topics of the chapter and just have a fun little discussion. So with that being said, let's get right to it. So the first thing I want to talk about this week has to do with the Vice Admirals. You guys knew it was coming. You know, every time a Vice Admiral is mentioned in these chapters, I got to hop right to it. And this week... Oda decided to knock these guys out. Last week, I was excited. I was happy, jubilated, because we saw that Vice Admiral Dahl and Vice Admiral Pomsky didn't immediately pass out due to Joy Boy's hockey. You know, all the Marines beside them passed out, but Dahl and Pomsky held strong. That might have been the best a Vice Admiral has looked here on this island. But Oda... He had to rip it away. You know, Oda said, you know what? Maybe that's too good for them. And he made them pass out in this chapter. Dang it, dude. I was off, oh, man. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. But it does make a lot of sense, right? This is Joy Boy's hockey we're talking about. This hockey sent the Gorosei packing back to Marie Jra. It knocked them out of their demon forms. The fact that it knocked out the Vice Admirals afterwards just makes a lot of sense. And also, it makes a lot of sense in context with the next bullet point that talks about how Dorian Brogy make a comment that this display of Conker's hockey might even be greater than that of Shanks. And I agree. Actually, we don't even have to speculate on that. It is better than what Shanks has shown. You know, going back to Film Red, not exactly canon, but Oda was working on it, right? He, he was there. But going to Film Red, when Shanks unleashed his Conker's hockey against the Marines, you know, Fujitora, Kizaru, and a bunch of VAs, all the Fodder Marines passed out, and the VAs, they dropped to their knees. They almost passed out, but they didn't. Instead, they just dropped to their knees. So the only way to really put Joy Boy ahead of Shanks in terms of hockey is to knock out the VAs. And I can see why he did it here. And of course, the VAs are just kind of punching bags at the end of the day. You know, rest in peace, those guys. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. You know, Oda said, hey, don't forget the Joy Boy hype. I know we took a week break. But just remember, guys, Joy Boy was him. He was definitely him. So yeah, that is how the chapter starts. And now let's talk about how the chapter ends. And then we'll tackle the middle portion here in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, sticking with the strats and sticking with the Giants for a second, we end off the chapter with Usopp. Because Usopp, you know, now that the Marines can't chase us, now that they're all passed out and everything is smooth sailing, Usopp is celebrating. This man, you know, Oda singled out Usopp here, according to the Brave Spoilers, and Usopp says, now, to the land of my dreams, Elbath. And it's like, yo, we're finally here. This is the final stretch of One Piece. Dreams are finally being realized and or tackled. And, you know, Usopp's dream here is to become a brave warrior of the sea. It's pretty abstract. We don't exactly know when that dream is necessarily accomplished, but going to Elbaf has always been a key point when it comes to Usopp and his whole character. So I'm excited for Usopp. I'm still expecting really big things. And the fact that Oda had Usopp say this at the end of this chapter, I feel like Oda knows that a lot of Usopp fans are expecting great things for him there, whether it be character development or power-wise, right? I, I feel like that is not something crazy to expect going into Elbaf. And I'm just excited to see Oda executed because Usopp, man, you know, <laughs> if you told me Usopp wasn't here on Agate Island, I would have believed you. You know, it's like the Mandala effect. It's like, yo, is he here? Because he didn't really do anything. You know, I I'm not trying to slander Usopp, but the only things I can instantly recall Usopp doing here on Agate Island is one, you know, pointing the gun or the, the, the dial to York. I'm, I, I kind of forgot which one it is. It might be both. And then he also stopped the Thousand Sunny from falling off the clouds by using his bamboo shoots. Outside of that though, Usopp really has taken a backseat in this arc. Same with a lot of Straw Hats, right? And it's a little bit unfortunate. But I do think now that we're going into Elbaf, all of the Straw Hats who didn't get a chance to shine here on Egged Island can actually shine over on Elbaf. Which wouldn't be the first time Oda's done this, right? I mean, we had the whole uh, Whole Cake Island, Zoe, and Wano thing going on. So I don't think it would be that crazy, you know? Usopp getting some shine there, I think would be fantastic. Uh, so now to tackle the meat and potatoes of the chapter, you know, we got the giant middle portion, which actually correlates to the title of the chapter, which is aptly named The Two Empty Weeks. So we go back two weeks before the Straw Hats arrived here on Egged Island, and we see what was going down. So it turns out that Vegapunk, Shaka, and Pythagoras all knew that York was indeed the traitor. 
Uh, when they recorded the broadcast, they kind of just talked about, oh, you know, we knew somebody stole the Mother Flame, but they didn't really say that it was York, right? In the message, they never called her out. But here, two weeks ago, we come to find out that they actually knew all along that it was her. And this is great, in my opinion, because it does tie up a lot of loose ends. So going back to the traitor subplot, back when we were trying to find out which Vegapunk was evil, one thing kind of just rang weirdly. And that was the notion that every day, the Vegapunks synced up their memories and experiences to punk records. And if that's the case, how do they not know who the hell the traitor is and vice versa? Why does the traitor not know that they were found out the entire time? There were a lot of questions regarding that, but Oda comes out and he tells us that they did indeed know that it was York. And the reason why York didn't know she was foiled is simply because Shaka, Pythagoras, and Stella decided to wipe their memories clean. Right, just like how York wiped her memories from punk records and all the bad experiences, they did the same thing. And that perfectly explains why York was blindsided by the Vegapunk broadcast. Uh, so, you know, reading through these spoilers for the very first time, my gut reaction was, hey, if Vegapunk knows that York is a traitor, why didn't he do something about her well beforehand, right? Like, why didn't they do something that it doesn't make any sense you know why not just arrest york why not kill york or you know shut her down but i took a step back you know i, I took a minute and i thought about it for a little bit and i forgot well not forgot i remembered but i remembered that for the past couple of months york has been kidnapping cyberpole agents this entire time so with that in mind it's like well even if they do capture york everything has already been set in motion, right? Like, yeah, sure, you, you get rid of York and maybe that's like one bad chip off your shoulder, but York still had dealings with the world government. And then even going beyond the Cyberpole agents, York contacted the Gorosei three months prior and told them that Vegapunk is researching the Void Century. So with this flashback only taking place two weeks ago, if they captured York, it really wouldn't matter right? Like everything has already been set, you know, the dinner table's ready. Now you got to eat that dinner, right? Like maybe you can throw some salt in there and that's exactly what Shaka, Stella, and Pythagoras did, but you can't change what's on the menu. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. How do you feel about the Vegapunk portion of the chapter? How do you feel knowing that he knew who the traitor was this entire time? Uh, personally, you know, even though Stella couldn't do anything about York right away, I kind of wish he just told the Straw Hats who it was ahead of time. You know, like, hey, Loopy, don't trust York, you know, York isn't good. Uh, granted though, you know, Luffy really cleared that situation up pretty quick. You know, that, that was an off-screen event. So maybe he predicted ahead of time that this would just be a non-issue, right? Because one minute, you know, York is running amok. She has all of the Seraphim under her control. And the next minute, they're all docile in bubbles and York is defeated. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool that we got all of this wrapped up, but there are a couple of other things we do need to wrap up, right? There are a lot of events here on Egged Island that have still not been answered. Uh, you know, just going chronologically, the first thing I can think of is Zoro. What did Zoro want to talk to Vegapunk about? I honestly thought we would have seen that by now, but no, it's still a mystery. You know, we, with Stella and a majority of the Vegapunks dead, it's like, yo, are we going to get that flashback soon? Uh, another mystery is still, who gave the food to Luffy? Right, like we left Egg at Island and we're still no closer to figuring it out. Was it Caribou? Was it Van Auger? Uh, was it a satellite? Kizaru? A hologram? Like we have no idea. Like, you know, food still mysteriously showed up in front of Luffy. People asked who the hell did that and then it never got touched on again. So that right there is another loose end that Oda could potentially tie up this week. Uh, and, you know, just throwing it out there, we have to keep in mind that these are just the brief spoilers. You know, come tomorrow, come the next day, we will get a lot more details about this chapter, and that could be one of them. You know, we could get the answer to that pretty soon. Uh, outside of that, I'm also curious to see what's going to happen to Sentomaru and Stussy. Uh, at first, I was kind of worried about them, considering the fact that the VAs were still around. But now that we know that all the VAs are knocked out, and, you know, the only people who are awake are probably Kizaru and Saturn, I think Sentomaru could potentially escape. Uh, last we saw, Sentomaru was tied up in chains by some fodder marines, but now that we know that all the marines are knocked out, 
I think Centimara might be home free, right? Simply hop on a boat and just get the heck out of there. And the same could be said with Stussy. You know, Kanku turned a blind eye towards her. So I think Stussy now has a really good chance to escape, especially now that all the Gorosi are gone too, right? We got to keep in mind, Egghead Island went from a war zone to completely silent in the span of a single attack from Joy Boy. Uh, so yeah, I I'm excited to see what the fallout is for a lot of our allies, you know, because I think Stussy deserves a happy ending. Uh, same with Sentomaru. And I'm excited to see where they go now. You know, now that they're not with the Straw Hats, now that they're no longer with the Vegapunks, where will they call home next? And also, also, how do you guys feel about Vegapunk's final words in this chapter? Uh, I didn't go over them, but I'll come to them now. But in the Vegapunk flashback, he leaves himself a message that says, have faith in yourself and die. And that's what he did, right? He died and the message played and he had faith that the message would go through. Sadly, the message didn't go all the way through, right? We cut off the ending and we also cut off the Will of D portion, but you know, 95% of Vegapunk's message went through. So that was nice and dandy. But outside of that, Vegapunk's final words in the present were simply, hey, about the One Piece, I want your crew to get it. And I was like, damn, dude, that, those are some good words, you know? Like, I was always of the mindset that Vegapunk's death was very unceremonious. You know, usually when characters die in One Piece, you know, we got like a double page spread, you know, Oda's going crazy over here. But when Vegapunk died, man, you know, Kizaru shot him and that was it. You know, the heartbeat monitor went off and then boom, message started playing. And I was like, okay, like it didn't feel like a One Piece death. So the fact that Oda brought it back in and now that we get to see his final words to Sanji and the crew, it feels good, right? It feels good, you know, and I'm kind of curious to see why Vegapunk singled out the Straw Hat crew out of everyone to find the One Piece? Why did he place his bets and his faith in us, right? Is it because of the historical significance with Luffy being a member of the D clan with him having the Sun God Nika fruit? Or did Vegapunk simply really like the Straw Hats? You know, after he spent some time with them, he's like, hey, if any pirate group were to get it, I hope it's you guys because I like y'all, right? But yeah, man, there's a lot of takeaways with this chapter. And again, I want to pass the question back to you guys. How do you feel about all of this? Uh, is this chapter to your liking? Are you not a fan of the Vegapunk flashback? What mysteries did you want to get solved? And or what are your thoughts on some of these lingering mysteries? How do you feel about Vegapunk not doing anything about York for two weeks straight? Again, love to hear all your thoughts down below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Sai, signing out.